name's Kanal. Hi, my name is Roshan. And welcome to the Geeks of the Valley podcast, where we connect with some of the brightest minds globally who are leading their respective industries today to discuss the hottest upcoming industry trends and how their work is affecting the global economy. Today from Hong Kong, we have I.C. Jiang, an advocate for women in tech. Thank you, I.C., for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, I.C., how are you today? I feel pretty good because I'm always working on my the things I feel really passionate about, so I feel good. Very happy to hear that, I.C. And, uh, you know, just to really start off this podcast... How did how did it all start for you? Uh, from you know where you started to build yourself, build yourself up to where you are today. I see. Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, let me briefly uh, introduce my background. So I actually uh, get my bachelor's degree here in Hong Kong and studying system engineering and engineering management. So actually, it's a quite interesting subject, which, um, which actually position itself between the in the middle of business and the engineering world. So basically, we think like an engineer, but we also possess um, business acumen. So we can evaluate different uh, scenarios in business world and try to find the optimal solution. So I feel I'm really into this kind of bridging functions between the customers as well as the technical 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 parts. So um, that's basically actually set the basis of uh, where I began. And later, I I can understand that now there's a word called like life quarterly crisis from the young generation. So they do not figure out what they're going to do in the future. And to be honest, I've encountered the same things previously. And I think there's a turning point in my life when I was around year two. And I joined the program which is organized by Microsoft. It's called uh, Microsoft Ghostbark. So it's a three-day camp. And they want to lift up women in the ICT industry. So that's why I invite a lot of great uh, female leaders in technology world and share a lot of their point of views and trying to empower more and more girls towards STEM education as to more uh, on this perspective. And I feel very impressed to be honest that's the first time i began to realize oh actually there do have a problem in this um technology industry and i love the initiative they are taken but i feel like uh this program is too short and i want to make it happen in the long run so that's why after the program i actively search uh, and like try to find um whatever i can do to continuing this and I try to search online and I want to see, okay, if there's any community doing the same things. And I suddenly I encounter an opportunity as a volunteer. So um, I don't know whether some of the audience might be aware that Google actually is taking a great initiative on a global uh, community called uh, Google uh, uh, developer groups and mm-hmm. actually the Hong Kong branch is pretty new when I was drawn and they are still trying to figure figure everything out and, uh, and how long has that been I see how many years has that been um now it's almost three years oh wow yeah. okay mm-hmm. yeah, oh, wow, that's yeah, awesome we- it's pretty early and the um, like the organizing team is pretty small and I just joined as a volunteer and I I feel like um the first I think the first event I'm joining is is to celebrate International Women's Day and they want to also try to boost up um um more and more women in tech in Hong Kong but actually uh, when you consider Hong Kong is a interesting place when people think of technology usually when people think of Hong Kong they regard it as a financial hub and it's or yes. professional services driven whether it's investment banking consulting or maybe lawyer and right. all, especially when I was studying STEM major uh, from local, most of the local students' view, they regard it. If you uh, major in engineering, which means you are not the brightest student when you enter in the college. So actually, such uh, awareness is pretty different when you consider how you think of in mainland China, for example, Tsinghua, when they regard it like uh, engineering mm-hmm. is where the best student can get into. Or even in U.S., we, they highly like put the like, engineers as a like uh, as a really priority priority like um, kind of. Um, um, regards. So that's why I feel like Hong Kong is pretty unique. That's actually caused a lot of 
barrier and burden when you want to push this initiative mm -hmm. so i when i involve in more and more i feel like i saw i just asking the organizing team so hey i feel like in your organizing team there are seems or like working professionals but i feel like if you want to do more on this perspective you have to bring this awareness at early stage which means you have to find a channel to connect it high school student or even university student and because I myself during that time was still at university so I feel like I can do some work on this perspective so I said hey um, can I join and I can definitely help if I can bring more uh, maybe more participants from university side and I also maybe try to seek corporate opportunities with universities that's how I began and I involved more and more and we definitely bring more and more uh, students to let them aware what's going on on this perspective. And I'm so glad that actually later, Google also launched another kind of program called, uh, I believe it's called Developer Student um, co Community or Club. Sorry, I don't remember exactly, but it's actually also trying to separate student group to working on these initiatives. So I definitely feel like there's such need to bring awareness at an early stage. So that's part of the story and later when I involved in more and more uh, I got some chance to speak about what I'm doing and and I and sometimes um this is the interesting feeling to be honest when you devote something you believe for a long run and sometimes some special opportunities will naturally come and I, I believe it's last year around August, I received an email that indicate actually Google have a scholarship. It's called a uh, Women Tech Maker Scholarship. So basically they want to select um, select a student within Asia Pacific to- oh, okay. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, they want to select a, with good academic performance and leadership skills as well as great community contribution towards uh, empowering more and more women entering the um, STEM or uh, technology and, world. Uh, and 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 when it when it comes to you know your involvement with starting multiple organizations in Hong Kong mm -hmm. supporting women uh, mm -hmm. what kind of motivated you to start these different organizations mm -hmm. um, and and how how do uh, how are women entrepreneurs seen in Hong Kong and that and that part of um, the world and how are they kind of driving change or innovation are there any trends or are there any interesting projects that you've heard mm -hmm. of or that you're participating in mm, definitely um as as i talked previously uh when i involving more and more i realized uh it's not enough for myself doing this thing uh, doing this initiative so i kind of try to leverage similar communities to work together so that's why i involve several communities one is uh women tech maker which is um backed up by google and another one is called uh, ladies who tech i met the founder in shanghai and she's also quite active on um, promoting these initiatives in mainland china and apart from that i also uh, set up my own community which is called uh, you know, girls. So this is more on the youth innovation side, which basically wants to empower more and more young girls to, uh, to equip them with design thinking mindset and bring more innovative solutions. So one key, back to your question. So I think one key challenge that um, uh, women or whatever you call women entrepreneur or women innovators face is I think it's really hard for them to change their mentality. What does it mean? So basically, sometimes yeah, I agree when, the, with that. when the opportunity comes, they naturally tend to deny themselves before giving a try, which causes great problems. I just briefly give you a simple example. Previously, actually, there are some coding competitions. I think it's arranged by Google. It's called um, um, Code Jam, or is it called Code Jam? Uh, sorry, I don't remember. And um. So actually, I asked one of my uh, female friends who major in computer science, I asked, hey, I think you should join. And it doesn't matter. They all arranged this uh, coding competition several rounds a uh, whole year. And if you didn't perform well, it will not affect whether you apply this company or get uh, affected or uh, like uh, you will be influenced by your results. It's totally um, uh, irrelevant. But actually, my friend said, oh, I, I don't think I could pass it or I could get a good result because I think it's, it's, it, I just cannot make it. So actually, this is interesting. Like why women tend to deny themselves is that 
actually according to research I read previously that when women actually when they are quite qualified for certain tasks, they tend to repay themselves seven seventy. Uh, their ability around seventy percent, but when male encounter the same situation, even though they have maybe possessed seventy percent ability, but they will feel more confident to present themselves that they are one hundred percent qualified. So I think it's all about mentality. It's how you think is that matters. When you change your mentality later, actually things become more easier because. Actually, I talk with uh, several HR department uh, in tech companies. They they said they do want to recruit more female engineer, but it's also hard for them to recruit more because the talent pool is not enough. Because there's not uh, so many female um, female uh, applic applicants. So mm -hmm. that's why actually back to the real question is that they tend to avoid and they are hesitant to. Uh, I think move forward uh, at their first step. That's the biggest challenge I observed um, based on my previous experience. So I see to really add on that aspect of mentality and what you just discussed, what mm -hmm. is the mindset of, what do you believe is a mind, the mindset of being an entrepreneur today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what uh, involves that specifically? Yeah, uh, I think for entrepreneur, it's kind of interesting. Usually I try to uh, influence people around me like think I like an entrepreneur. It does not mean you have to enter into a startup world or like you have to um, start your own company. It feels like when you think like an entrepreneur, you have a tendency to observe your surrounding more carefully. Usually as entrepreneur, you observe a pinpoint, whether it's small or big, and you find you always think a better solution to solve them. I think this is a great way when you want to observe your surroundings and basically it offers you a new perspective when you think of the world. Apart from that, when you think like an entrepreneur, you basically think the whole organization as a system. So you're not only focusing on, for example, finance, marketing, operation. You think like a whole picture. It's like you understand how the machine is running. I think it's really mm -hmm. important. It's Very like, good analogy. Yeah, it feels like how you know how the things is going and how they mm -hmm. cooperate and interconnected with each other. Basically, it will offer you a great benefit, even though you may be only working on marketing or on a single specific division, but it will definitely offer you a good advantage when you think of how to cooperate with different departments because you know where they are interested and where, what they are concerning about so that's why i feel like this is the value of to think like an entrepreneur or mm -hmm. what we nowadays advocate for um entrepreneurial thinking mindset so so then i guess to add that to follow up on, on that specifically being an upcoming leader right in hong kong what mm -hmm. challenges do you face today mm -hmm. being a woman entrepreneur mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. i think nowadays is that uh, basically Actually, it's, a, it's quite interesting. I, I encounter a word, it's called unconscious bias. Usually people- Oh do, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, do not actually um, have their obvious bias towards women, but usually they do not aware that actually they possess a, a kind of bias towards women. So basically, uh -huh. I think that's why now more and more companies kind of advocate on diversity and inclusion. It's more about educating the public to let them be aware of what is happening. For example, um, I still remember that, for example, there, if when there's a board meeting, if in the yeah. whole meeting room, there's only one uh, female, for example, board member, when they want to- Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, when they de deliver their uh, advice or opinion, usually they will be interrupted by the male colleagues. But actually, they, this male colleague do not intentionally to interrupt the, interrupt this conversation. They just, they just unconsciously doing it. So what if, if from the corporate side, they remind their male colleagues that you cannot interrupt, like, like you have to let female, specifically like, like female um, to, to speak to his, her whole idea and then evaluate her, uh, evaluate later. And apart from that, uh, I think another key point is that we have to bring more. Two is always better than one. What I mean, if in the same meeting uh, setting, if there's two uh, born, uh, female board member, when one um, um, deliver he, uh, her opinion and if another uh, woman board member can support and back up her and it's actually create a good more a good environment to 
kind of feeling supportive and feeling more comfort because it's not alone. It's not like you are. That's why I could back to the work I'm doing is that that's why I feel community uh, matters because actually it's creating such kind of um a uh, healthy supporting systems to create a more comfortable place for women to behave like for women to present themselves in a more honest and comfortable way. Yeah, and you made some really good points with that because a lot of let's say the venture world is mm-hmm. um, just backed by pr- predominantly male members. So it would be mm-hmm. great to see more women entrepreneurs, and that's sort of how I think we shape the whole dynamic of eventually mm-hmm. uh, getting more women entrepreneurs who eventually become uh, you know fund leaders, and it mm-hmm. kind of creates this positive cycle where. Uh, they're now funding more women entrepreneurs. Interesting point. Usually people said it's, it's kind of related to feminism. I don't think so. I think it's more kind of related with diversity. Let's just imagine the opposite scenario. What if in the world nowadays favors women more than men? It's, for example, if in the meeting, meeting there's maybe 90% of women and only 10% of male. And I think I will still work on this initiative because diversity is important. What I think it's not specifically related to gender. It's more like, actually, according to the research, when the team is more diverse, it actually can create direct financial benefits. So apart from the social responsibility or kind of a more equality world, it's actually directly related with financial returns. That's uh, another perspective I want to add on. I see. It was great to hear your thoughts and recommendations and kind of your different viewpoints. I wanted to kind of um, see if you had any tips or recommendations for our women entrepreneurs out there on what they can do to kind of get ahead and stay competitive mm-hmm. in this global mm-hmm. world. Oh, definitely. I think before I answer your question, I want to somehow um, make a point clear. Nowadays, like women empowerment become a really hot topic. But personally, I'm not uh, in favor of that term because I think when we want to lift up women, we kind of have to remove that label. For example, I sometimes read the news that uh, oh, there's a great female scientist uh, make a, a breakthrough or whatever they seems put too much emphasis on female. I think whether you are female or male, if you make a breakthrough, you should regard it as a scientist. You should regard it as engineer, as an entrepreneur. But I could somehow understand now we, uh, when we want to reach the equality, uh, like when we want to have reach the equal position, we definitely have to emphasize on that part. But I think maybe it's not that, not that many. So back to your question, I think the first point is Sometimes the supporting system is really important. When you go alone, it's sometimes more difficult. But when you build a supporting system, it's way more easier because uh, you share the same struggles and challenges. And um, usually, it will if one more person can support you and back up you, it's it becomes give your internal motivation. Back to the point is that somehow change your mentality and you have more willingness to try because you are not alone. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that we have to cultivate this kind of mindset that uh, you have to sometimes forgot your label. What we want to truly reach the equal, equal, equal stage is that actually we have to touch little girls. You can achieve whatever you want and somehow uh, break or disrupt the current um, gender stereotypes. I just read some articles that uh, now, like um, the company who produced Barbie doors, they, uh, I think they recently launched a, a gender neutral Barbie doll. And they even specifically produced some uh, female engineer Barbie doors and trying to cultivate little girls to regard, okay, this is pretty normal for me to be an engineer. It's normal for me to be a scientist. Instead, and it's okay to like, I like to play and be competitive, uh, like become quite competitive um, when I was young and it's okay. And on the other side, it's okay for like little boys to play Barbie dolls. Like it's, it's, it's actually the same methodology is that when we, trying to do more um the working space for women it also actually we should do more trying to empower more males into the family world so i think it's more and more on the uh, share the same uh, methodology and, and one more point i want to add is that it first 
first step is really important and Usually, when you、uh, make your first move, and the next phase you have to be aware is that connecting dots. It's not. It's been told so many times, but I, what I want to emphasize is connecting practical dots. You have to set a really practical goals, and so that it's just like when you do fitness, you have to do a recovery run so that you feel good when you want to take risks and to set out of your comfort zone. So that's what I mean is to connecting pra- practical dots, and when you accumulate enough. Gradually, you will feel like you already made some progress, and it will kind of more and more close towards the goal you want to achieve. And last but not least, as always, be confident, always be true to yourself, and just do whatever you feel you are passionate about. And it's I think that's really important. Okay, cool. So I wanted to pivot a little bit to talk about your involvement with the Hong Kong X. Uh, X Tech startup platform mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. because I I know that Sequoia Capital is also involved with this in China. Could you talk、yeah. a little bit more about、um, how this is different than maybe some of the other types of funds out there? And if there's anything、um, that they're doing to let's say support、uh, inclusivity、uh, with gender or、uh, different races、okay. and backgrounds. Okay. Okay. Before I talk that, I、uh, want to talk about some background about Hong Kong startup ecosystem. Usually, we observe、sure. a, a scenario like in Hong Kong,、uh, people tend to possess a pragmatic mindset, which means that people are more attractive to save their effort by making sense of things in a quickest and more efficient manner. So that's why actually it creates a barrier for Hong Kong to、uh, adopt、uh, to become an early adopter of innovative technology. For example, Example the fintech or whatever e payment, and they pr- prefer rather to wait and assess、uh, the successful overseas、uh, technology improvement. I think this creates a burden for especially from a venture capital point of view because there's a less、um, there's comparably less startups are willing to devote into a technology perspective. But we do have to admit there's more and more unicorn is happening in Hong Kong. For example, the Sense Time and the DGI, they are they、mm-hmm. are quite successful. But、um, I think what our fund is looking for is pretty different. Is that Instead, we directly find the existing startup team. Actually, we back to the academic world. For example, if we foresee there is a potential breakthrough in certain, for example, science or engineering, and we directly approach to the professors and the PhD team. But usually, they never think they will enter into the startup world, and usually, they are. Pretty a、uh, like technical person or engineering type of person. They do not that business.、Uh, they do not possess strong business sense. But what we want to let them know is that、um, they have the potential. And what we want to do is trying to、um, build a connection from the research,、uh, academic research breakthrough, and somehow think of ways to help them to make them to become uh, some uh, practical industrial practice. That's. Our our fund is looking for. So I think、um, basically my daily job is more like a learning process. Like today、mm-hmm. I learned from a chemistry、uh, professor, and that day I learned from whatever、uh, physics professor. So you can always like you you basically you think in the future because the research they are doing doing doing、uh, at this moment.、Uh, I can see the potential that they will be widely adopted in the coming five or ten years. So it's pretty a、uh, good feeling. On that perspective, yeah. Th- thank you for sharing your thoughts. And if you know people want to reach out to you、uh, and learn more about what you're doing, or maybe support some of your initiatives,、um, mm-hmm. what's the best way they can get in touch with you and in- interact with you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, um, you can find me on LinkedIn, and I like I I I basically watch、um, read LinkedIn、uh, message every day, so I I will reply and yeah. Yes, and so guys,、uh, please contact Icy on LinkedIn. That is I C E Y, first name, last name, J I A N G. Thank you so much for your time, Icy, and、uh, we wish you the best and hope to have you on our podcast sometime down the line. Definitely, thank、yeah. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank、you